Hello Divination and welcome. In today's tutorial, I'm going to show you how to create pop-out service descriptions on Hover with Divi. This is the final result we're aiming to achieve. So without wasting a lot of time, let's dive in and let's get started. So before we begin, the images and the material that I'll be using in today's tutorial will be coming from the investment company Layout Pack. So if you want to follow this step by step, make sure you download the investment company layout pack so that all the images will be added to your media library. So if I come over here to my library, you'll see that these are the images that I'll be working with. All right, so what we're gonna do now is to start by creating a brand new page. So I'm gonna click on add new and we're gonna give this page a name. I'm just gonna call this pop out service descriptions. Click on use DV builder. So we're gonna build this from scratch. And here we are going to start by adding a single column. Now, before we add any modules here, let's go into our row settings and make some additions to our background. So I'm gonna start here by coming over to the background, click on the third tab to add an image to our background. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button. And the image I'm gonna add is this one here. As I mentioned, this is from our layout pack. Click upload an image. Next, I'm gonna come over here to design sizing. So I'm gonna make sure I set my gutter width so I'm gonna activate this and set this to yes, and then I'm just gonna drag this all the way to one. So the gutter width is pretty much the distance between the columns. All right, so the next thing we're gonna do is to set our width here to 100%. And then we're gonna come over here to our height and set this to 320. And then we also need to go to our padding here and make sure we, we remove any spaces to the top and the bottom by coming over here to the padding and setting this to zero pixels activating my chain so the zero can be added both to the top and the bottom. Now it's time to add our module. So I'm gonna save this, click here on this plus button and search for my blurb module. So here it is, I'm gonna select it. So let's start by adding a title. So instead of having this default text here, I'm just gonna set this to service and let's choose an icon to go with this. So to do that, you want to come over here to image and icon because by default, it brings in a, an image. So to change that, we need to say use icon, yes. And then we're just gonna choose an icon to go with this. So the icon I'm gonna go with is an icon of a computer monitor. And for this, we're not gonna need some, um, some of this text we have here. So I'm gonna come back over here to text and just delete all this text. Next, we're gonna come over here to our background and add an image. So I'm gonna click here on this third tab to add our image. And the image we're gonna go with is this one here, the laptop, click upload an image. Now, if you wanna use uh, your own images for your designs, in fact, let me just go back here so I can show you the size. The dimensions that you need to use are 320 by 215 to achieve a similar design as I'm doing here in this tutorial. So I'm gonna click here on upload an image. So over here where it says background image size, we need to set this to fit. And the, and the position needs to be set to top center. So now we need to add a gradient to our design here. So I'm gonna come over here to my second tab, click here on this plus button, and then we're gonna start by adding our first color. So I'm just gonna drag the slider down because the color that I'm gonna add here is going to have some transparency. So we need to make sure that we have the RGBA values here active on the screen. So I'm gonna paste my values in here. And by the way, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so we have our first color. Now it's time to add our second color. So I'm gonna click here to add my second color. I'm gonna paste it. Now let's add our start and end position for our gradient. So our start position here is going to be 34% and our end position is going to be 71. Now for our gradient to really show correctly, we wanna make sure that place gradient above background image is set to yes. And now it's time to work on our icon. So I'm gonna come over here to the design tab and uh, let's go to image and icon. So the first thing we're gonna do is to change our icon color. So I'm gonna click here on this eyedropper tool and change my icon to white. Next, we need to align our text because as you can see, this service text here is aligned left. So we want that to be centered. So I'm gonna come over here, text alignment, center. Now we also need to add a font to our title and also the colors. So I've just clicked here on this brush tool so I could go to my settings. 
So the first thing we're going to do is to start by changing our title font. So I'm going to click here on, on um, my default font and search for Archivo. I'm going to select that. And in order for our text to be able to be easy to read, I'm going to set this to white. And then I'm also going to change the text size because as you can see, it's not big enough. So I'm going to set this to 38. And we're also going to add some letter spacing. And this is going to be 4 pixels. And our maximum width for this is going to be 320. So I'm just going to come over here to sizing and set my max width to 320. And we also need to align this module to the center. Now, I think we may also want to add our height to 320. Okay, so that looks much better now. So moving on, we're going to come over here to spacing because here we need to add a padding to the top of 68 pixels. So as you can see, we've just added some breathing space here in our blurb. All right, so um, we need to also come over here to advanced visibility and set our Z index to one. And back over here on the design, we need to add some rounded corners to our design here. So we're going to go to border and set our rounded corners to 10 pixels. Okay, so you can see here, I know it's not very clear, but I've added my rounded corners. So pretty much we're done here with this design. I'm going to save this. And now it's time to add our call to action module. So I'm going to click here on this plus button and search for call to action and select it. So this call to action is going to be positioned to the left of the blurb module. All right. So the first thing we're going to do is to align everything to the left. So I'm going to come over here to my design tab, click on text, align everything over to the left. And we can start now by adding all our fonts. So I'm going to start by adding my title here, my font to the title. So this one here is going to be called Akivo. We've already uh, chosen it before. And our size is going to be 22. And our width is going to be 320. So I'm going to come over here to sizing and set my width to 320. By default, it's set to auto. All right, so now that we have our width, Let's set our module alignment to the left. And over here on the height, we're going to set this to 320 as well. Now let's head over to the margins because this is how we're going to position this in the right place. So I'm going to click here on spacing and uh, I'm going to start here by adding my top margin. And this is going to be minus 320. And now you can see this now snaps into place. So over here, we're going to give this uh, some padding of 40 to the top bottom and also to the left and the right. So this is just so that we have enough breathing space around this content. So finally, for this, we're not going to need our background here. So I'm going to come back over here to content, click on background, and I'm just going to say use background color, no, and then save. So what we're also going to need is to have a similar call to action here over to the right, which is going to appear on hover. So instead of going through all the steps of creating, recreating this, we're just going to duplicate what we have here. So I'm going to come over here. And uh, if you can't, really can't see your options, in fact, I can see them now. I can just duplicate it that way. And as you can see, we really can't see where my other module is. So in order for you to be able to just use this easier, just click here on expand settings, click on wireframe mode. And now you can see this is where your call to action is. So I'm going to click here on this uh, module set, uh, settings icon. And then if you want to view everything in desktop view, just click on this little icon. And this now takes you back to your views. Okay, so in order for this to be positioned correctly, we need to align this to the right. So I'm going to come over here to design, sizing. And for our module alignment here, you can see it's aligned to the left. That is why it's on top of this other one. So I'm going to Align it here to the right, and now you can see it has appeared over here to the right. So now it's time to create the, um, the button that is going to activate our actions on hover. So I'm just going to save this for now, and then I'm going to add my button module. So again, I'm going to come back over here to my wireframe mode, click this plus button, and add my button. Now I can go to my desktop view. So in the button here, the text we're going to add is just text that says learn more. And now you can see my button is now appeared. So let's start by aligning our button to the center. So I'm going to click here on design, alignment, center. And for our button text color, we're going to set this to white. So I'm going to click here on use custom styles for buttons, set this to yes. 
And then for button text color, set this to white. And then we also need to add our background color because as you can see here, our button here has disappeared. So we need to add a background color so the text can appear correctly. So I'm gonna click here on this plus button and paste my color in here. And as I mentioned before, if you wanna use the exact same colors as I'm using throughout this tutorial, I will leave a link to the post in the show notes below. All right, so I've added my button here. Next, I'm gonna to come to my border width and make sure this is set to zero because I don't need that. And then for the button, button border radius, I'm gonna set this to 10 and I'm gonna set my letter spacing to four. Now we want our button font here to just match with the fonts that we've been using throughout. So I'm gonna click here on default and set this to Akivo. So now we need to position our button. So to position it correctly, you can either just drag here to add your margins that way, but I prefer to do it manually. So I'm gonna come over here to spacing and here on the margin, it needs to be set to minus 25. And now you can see it's been moved into position. Next, I'm gonna come over here to the advanced tab, visibility and set my Z index to two. So this ensures that my button is pretty much above everything else that's on the screen. So now it's time to create our popover effect. So I'm gonna close that and then come over here to my row settings. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do here is to come over here to design sizing. And I'm gonna set my maximum width to 320. So this is going to be my normal position. And if I want to add my hover effect, I'm gonna click on this arrow that's pointing up click on hover, and then I'm gonna set my size here to 1080. So now you can see everything has appeared. So this is gonna be our normal position, and then on hover, this is what's gonna happen. So I'm not sure if you've noticed this, but um, over here, when I, when I go to my normal state, you notice that our rounded corners here still have that black on the rows. So let's do this, some final touches here by coming all the way down here to border and setting our rounded corners to 10. And now you can see our design looks much better. Now you can see our button here has been cut off. So to fix that, we're gonna come over here to advanced, click on visibility, and then on horizontal overflow, we wanna make sure this is set to visible and the same for vertical. And now our button is showing correctly. So I'm gonna save this and then we're going to test and see if this is working correctly. So I'm gonna click here on publish, exit the visual builder, and now when I come on this button here and hover on it, you can see now it's revealing all the content. So with this knowledge, you can now experiment with more design options now that we have the basic setup in place. So there you have it. Thank you all for watching. If you like this video, please give me a thumbs up and do follow us on our social media platforms. By doing so, you'll be notified every time we release new tutorials. Until next time, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.